Welcome to Charts Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Wednesday the 4th of September comes to you from London. And as always we start look by looking at the dollar index falling away a little bit but still looking very strong uh, bullish uptrend on all three time frames. Uh, and that means of course that the euro dollar has been weaker. Recovery a little bit this uh, last uh, trading session but uh, still plumbing new lows. Uh, making two-year lows against the dollar. Uh, looking at the Japanese yen, we're seeing the dollar falling away here, so the yen strength is actually still the dominant theme. Strong dollar, stronger yen. Sterling fell below 120 yesterday uh, with the crucial commons vote um, on no deal and has recovered this morning, so um, the market uh, seems to like that outcome. Uh, the spectre of a general election now hangs, and it'll be interesting to see how that affects sterling. But all this uncertainty is pushing sterling to three-year lows against the US dollar, so that's uh, quite uh, significant there. Uh, looking against the euro, we see sterling actually recovering to short-term bullish just, um, but the medium and long-term charts are still bearish. And against the Swiss franc, we've seen a little bit of a recovery as well, but still below the 120 mark. Taking a look at Bitcoin, we're sitting at $10,500, so we're holding the $10,000 level. Not quite enough to get us into medium-term bullish territory. Uh, the US stock markets fell last night. We saw the S&P 500 index down 0.7%. Not enough to take us uh, bearish, but still uh, struggling to break out of this uh, range that's developed over the last few weeks. The NASDAQ was down three quarters of a percent. And the Dow Jones index was down over 1%. So um, pretty poor performance uh, on the indices generally. The Russell 2000 remains bearish on all three time frames, and that's really still uh, a major issue. We're seeing the breadth in the US stocks um, being weak. Uh, the futures this morning are actually up quite sharply. We've had better data out from China this morning, uh, and so global recession fears are receding a little bit just on that data. So we're seeing the S&P future up uh, three quarters of a percent, and the Nasdaq E-mini up over one percent. So um, looking stronger there, and does look like we will see uh, the U.S. market opening uh, higher. Looking at the FTSE 100, we're up on that as well. We're up a third of a percent this morning, so we're maintaining short-term bullish there. And the FTSE 250, again, pushing to higher levels, so we're seeing that as well. Uh, and if we look at the DAX, we're seeing um, the DAX pushing a little bit higher and the CAC Courant almost up 1% as well, uh, pushing higher bullish on all three time frames. So still one of the best-looking markets in Europe. Uh, the Tokyo market was down slightly. We're still bearish in the medium and long term charts, but the short term chart is bullish. The Hang Seng was actually up a massive 3.4%, so we're seeing a big sharp rise there. And the Shanghai Composite was up 1% on that Chinese data, looking better as well. Uh, Sensex has been very subdued lately. It remains in bearish territory on the medium and short term charts, and it was only up slightly. And the Aussie market was down a third of a percent, so um, th this market didn't perform in line with uh, the rest of Asia. Brent crude is sitting at 58.54. It's up half a dollar this morning, but remains bearish. WTI, the picture of course is very similar. US Nat gas sitting at $2.34 is slowly marching uphill, but medium and long term still remains very bearish. Gold sitting at $15.37 this morning, so that's looking um, better. And silver uh, also um, looking strong uh, up this morning about half a percent. US 10 year yields uh, remain in the doldrums at 1.47%. Uh, um, so really just hanging at this uh, sub-150 mark now. Um, and we have got downside targets not activated uh, into the 120s, so that would be a massive fall uh, for US yields. Uh, German bonds falling back a little bit. We're just entering short-term bearish territory there, but expect this to be short-lived. The rally in bond prices still looks pretty assured. Taking a look at the individual stocks now, so um, this data coming to you from Yahoo Finance, uh, and we start by looking at the Dow uh, Jones. <coughs> of course, it underperformed the market. We had Pfizer up 1.6%, uh, and Procter & Gamble also up. The Pfizer chart not looking great. Procter & Gamble actually looking very strong. That chart has trended beautifully for the last uh, uh, 16 months, and um, we are actually 20% higher than the Dow this year on, on the relative. Looking at the uh, downside, we've got Boeing. They were down 2.6%. That chart still just holding on, and Goldman Sachs also falling away uh, some 2.4%, uh, still remaining bearish on the um, long-term chart. 
Taking a look at the NASDAQ now, uh, the best performer was Kraft Heinz Company. They were up 2%, but the chart still looks terrible. KLA were up 1.3%, and that chart looks amazing. Uh, a real bright spot in a lot of uh, negative-looking charts. We've got Electronic Arts. They were up 1.2%, but not enough to change the bearish nature of the charts there. Looking at the downside, <coughs> we had Alexan Pharmaceuticals down 5.5%. Quarate Retail were down 5.4%. That chart also looking terrible. And Win Resorts also falling lower. Lots of these charts are actually looking pretty bearish. The Aussie market this morning, uh, we had uh, 7 West Media. They're up 3.8%. Uh, Channel 7, not enough to change the downtrend there. Metcash were up 3.5%. That stock looking a little bit better, but still not really clearly bullish. Oil Search Limited, uh, they were up 3.3%. Uh, and again, a bearish looking chart. You can see we're struggling to find good looking charts at the moment. CSR, they were down 6%. That's uh, bearish on the uh, long term chart and now looking like turning bearish on the medium term daily chart. Medibank Private Limited. This stock actually holding up fairly well, although it was down 6% overnight. Looking at the Nifty 50 now, the uh, best performer in, uh, in the Indian market, uh, the top 50 stocks, was Bharati and Fatel. They are actually looking pretty good on the medium term. Still not quite a recovery on the long-term chart. And if we look at the downside here, we had some pharmaceuticals. They were down 6.8%, not looking great there. And Tata Motors down a further 5%. That chart looking pretty grim as well. You can see here the live pricing coming in from Yahoo Finance. Um, <coughs> taking a look at the UK market now, we have Prudential, they're the best performer this morning, up 3%, and uh, that's still not enough to really change the look of the chart. M&S are up 2%. Um, but they look set to crash out of the FTSE 100 uh, today. And, of course, that's quite big news. Uh, M&S no longer in the top 100 stocks. So it'll be interesting to see um, where, they, where the stock goes now. But um, that will probably have a little bit of a self-fulfilling aspect there. We're down more than 30% against the Dow Jones Index. We've underperformed there. Burberry Group, the next uh, best stock, up 2.3%. Um, and that's looking still pretty good, bullish above the cloud. And Standard Chartered up 2.2% not looking as good at all. Taking a look on the downside, we've got not many stocks down, maybe 15 stocks. We've got Vodafone, they're down this morning, uh, so not looking great there. Barrett Developments, um, also not looking great. And Microfocus, their woes continue after that profits warning last week. So we are just seeing weakness creeping in there. Taking a look now at the top uh, uh, 250, Amigo Holdings up 2.2%. Chart looks terrible. Rank group up 3.5%. The medium term chart looking better, but the long term still not there. Dunelm group, they're defying most retail charts, although we are just seeing a little bit of a weakening on the medium term. They've actually outperformed the, uh, the Dow Jones index by nearly 50% this year, so quite an achievement for a retailer. Uh, Just group are the worst performer this morning, down 11.7%. That chart looks terrible. And Avast PLC, they're down 5%, although the chart here looks pretty good. Looking at the top 50 in Europe now, we've got Kering SA, they're up uh, 4%, and LVMH uh, up 3%. So we are seeing some of these charts still looking pretty good. On the downside in Europe, we've only got four stocks down this morning. Danone, although that's an amazing looking chart, is down 0.3%. And Imbev, the brewer in um, Brussels, they're actually down 0.2%. But again, the chart looks okay. The long-term chart just making the transition to bullish. Unilever, um, also an amazing-looking stock at the moment, breaking to new highs. So interestingly, again, we're seeing the worst performers are the best charts. That's it for today. Until tomorrow, happy charting. See you then.